Hi boys and girls. Today we're going to finish our poems about the ocean and the animals that live in it. So let's see. Oh, there we go. We finished that shark yesterday. Let's see what's up next. The Blenny. There are uglier fish than a Blenny, but not many. <laughs> Look at him. Definitely not one of the most beautiful sea creatures. The flying fish. We don't wish to brag or boast, but we can fly along the coast. We don't want to rant or rave, but we can soar above a wave. Side by side, we glide and skim. And by the way, we also swim. So flying fish, they do jump out of the water and they can fly for a bit, but they can't live in the air. They have to stay by water because they're still fish, so they still have to breathe underwater. But they, ha they use their fins and or wings on the side to help them soar through the air as they jump through a wave. The clam. They say, as happy as a clam, but would you like to have to cram your body deep inside a shell? And furthermore, I think clams smell. <laughs> the anglerfish. We learned about the anglerfish in our video that he lives deep in the ocean, remember? And then the top part of his body has a little light which helps him attract fish because where he lives is really dark. And if you've seen the movie Finding Nemo, there's an anglerfish that Dory and Marlin have to run away from. The anglerfish lurking on the ocean floor, there works a crafty carnivore. The anglerfish has set a trap with its dangly, fleshy flap, complete with fishing pole and bait, and all it has to do is wait for some poor fish to take the lure and make the ocean one fish fewer. <laughs> the skates. The skinny skates are flat as plates. They feed on small invertebrates. They find upon the ocean floor, then skate along to find some more. This animal is pretty cool. I've never seen a skate before. Kind of looks like a stingray. The manatee. The manatee is not a man. It's heavy as a minivan. It has a bristly big mustache and paddle tail to make a splash. The manatee does not take tea, it swallows plants beneath the sea. It eats so much that it may seem, at times, to be a manatee. The jellyfish. Thin as a drape, umbrella shaped, it gently glides through the seascape. Though small in size and with no eyes, its tentacles can paralyze. In spotty spurts, it loves to flutter in its vain search for peanut butter. The oysters. Did you know the ocean's oysters sometimes change from girls to boysters? <laughs> then the boys change back to girls. Are the girls the ones with pearls? So that's cool, an oyster can be either a boy or a girl. The rainbow trout, so suave, so chic, so magnifique, to sport a rainbow on your cheek. And down your flank, so swell, so swank, divine, delish. Too bad, you're a fish. <laughs> the tetra, the itty bitty pretty tetra, is small, minute, petite, or etc. So the tetras actually are, if you look in the fish tank at Clara Barton, we have some fluorescent colored tetras that Mr. Don put on there. I think we have a pink one, a green one, a yellow one, and a blue one. So that's the type of fish that they are. The end. Now yesterday I challenged you to write a poem. And I read you the poem that I wrote. Shark, white and gray, people swim away. Lots of teeth, see a fin, the shark is beneath. And we explained a little bit about what my poem was. 
and why I chose the words that I did. So when you finish your poems today, I would love to see a picture of them in Class Dojo so I can share them with the class. So we have gray in a way that rhyme and teeth and beneath. Now, if it's, a, if it's too much to do four sentences, maybe just do two. And we talked about different things we can talk about. So you pick an animal. I pick shark because that's one of my favorite animals in the ocean. And I talked about its coloring. What happens when people see it? Part of its body, so its teeth. And I also talked about another part of its body, the fin, and what it does when it's swimming. You can talk about the same thing with your animal, what color it is, what it likes to eat, where it likes to live. Is your animal big? Is it small? What shape is your animal? Those are all great things that you can add in your poems. And I'm so excited to read them. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.